Uh, good day, people. I'm here because Sid asked me to be here to discuss with you some of the things that have been going on in his life over the, the last while, and I know you haven't been kept up to date with a lot of the uh, components. Uh, more recently, uh, Sid was referred to me because of his continuing symptoms, fogginess, dizziness, lightheadedness, inability to, to do things to his maximum function. We were able to see him at my lab at Life University in Marietta, Georgia, and we're able to um, follow up and work with Dr. Collins and his team, and we had a different type of approach where we looked at the physicality, and we did specific measurements that allowed us to really make a very good diagnostic impression of what was happening in Sid's brain. Now, you all know that your brain allows you to, to think and to write and to read, to look at paintings or to perhaps paint them. But one thing that the brain does is it really allows you to know where you are in space and where space is in reference to you. In Sid's case, that was not exactly correct. That is to say, uh, areas of space were not in, in an appropriate grid to where he would perceive them. It's as if you can imagine something to be in your right, but it's a little bit off of right. And we have different types of reflexes. You all have probably had a fall or a slip. And you know if you fall to the right side, you're going to lift your arms out or something to catch yourself from falling. Well, you can imagine if your brain is, has been injured and that you perceive that you're falling and you're not falling, then you can have different reactions of different muscles uh, and different stability factors that make it difficult for you to do certain things. We were able in our lab to quantify this, get some numbers, get some data, and then to develop strategies that allowed us to basically build him a new grid. We can change the uh, representation of body parts and environment in the brain. We can do that very, very successfully with different types of strategies. And Sid did very, very well. So at the present time, he is able now to embrace strategies with, with a new system where everything is in line. That is to say, where his right hand is perceived is where his right hand is. Where his right leg is perceived to be is where his right leg is. He's markedly stable. The function that we have between the head, the eyes, the neck, his spine is really absolutely marvelous. The problem that we have in Sid's case and, and in cases of other people is that the length of time that he's had the the aberrancy, if you would, or the disconnection of what his function was, has led him into different patterns that now we have to break. Things are working well now, and he's got to condition himself with this, these new patterns. When we first saw Sid, different functions didn't work well at all. Now they do work well, and he's got to get used to them. There's some other strategies and adjustments to his system that we need to do over the next little while, and I'm very... Uh, very, very thankful. It's, uh, it's Christmas, I think, for Sid Crosby and for people that care for him, and it's a very good start. Our treatment uh, of Sid was not only to allow him to return to hockey, but we're very, very concerned with the state of, of anybody's brain when they injure it, and our greatest direction is to ensure that Sid has a very fruitful and positive life, that he can do anything he wishes to do in hockey and after hockey, to live the vibrancy and to embrace that type of activity. As a consequence, the things that we do in our lab, not only do we see people from around the world with similar difficult problems such as Sid, but we're very much involved in a vitalistic approach to wellness to prevent such injuries, uh, such as having no tolerance for headshots in this game and in, in other games. If we can put our direction to preventing more injuries such as this and then address the people that do have concussions, then we can make a very, very profound statement that not only can affect the sport uh, of hockey and other sports, but society in general. So we've got a long course ahead of us. The incidence of head injury is epidemic. We're seeing it in young kids. We're seeing it in old kids and everywhere in between. Uh, this case is, is one of the, the good outcomes. In some cases are not as good as this one. We're fortunate today to have technology that allows us to quantify things in ways we only dreamed of yesterday. And it's a good time to have a head injury now compared to a few years ago, but hopefully we won't have to go through these things in the future. Any questions?
Thank you for the availability today. Uh, Sid, how are you mentally uh, through this eight months of, of dealing with this? And at any time over this period, did you consider retirement? Um, mentally, I, I feel good. It's probably the best I've, I've felt, honestly. So, um, you know, really happy with the last three weeks. And um, it's been very positive. It's been a tough road. Um, retirement, no. I mean, I think I've always thought about the consequences of this injury and making sure I'm smart with it because at the end of the day, that's the last thing I want. But um, that being said, I think, no, I didn't really give a whole lot of thought to that. Um, this is for anybody up there that, that can answer it. What, when you talk about return to play or, or, and, and clearing for contact, uh, what, what is the, your guys' definition of contact? Is that, have you taken any bumps at all, or is that normal hockey contact? And, and, and secondly, the, the Christmas uh, line, I, I was a little confused by what that meant, so if you could maybe elaborate yeah, on that, sure. please. Uh, the reason for Christmas, it's, a, it's sort of a celebration. This is going to have a very good outcome. SID shouldn't have any sequelae or problems in the future. What we found with our testing is that we have different perturbations. It's a large word, just means to say something's going to knock you off your center. And Sid wasn't able to tolerate small perturbations. He would fall or so. Now he's able to tolerate great perturbations. So we have the numbers. When you have contact of any sort, whether it be contact with the ice or just contact walking down the road or contact with another player, that causes a different reaction. So if someone presses against you, you're going to have reactions of your body specific to where you perceive the contact coming from and actually where you are. When things are askew, then your reaction to that contact is not appropriate. That is to say, someone may push you in this direction and rather than rotating away from that contact, you might rotate into it. So our therapy is very, very specific to allowing the refinement and development of appropriate responses now that SIDS uh, on his on his way to a, to a fuller recovery.